Welcome to July Set News, take the top stories in cryptocurrency and July assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got a pretty full day. First up, we're going to talk about what happened yesterday in our second part of the MicroStrategy World Now uh, seminar. So I'm going to talk about uh, the second half of what was going on leading into today, where we're going to have people uh, coming in and talking to all the corporations such as Binance and Gemini and Coinbase. So that'll be interesting. Also, take a look at uh, a report that small and medium holders control 40% of the Bitcoin supply, says data. And this kind of blows the, uh, the whole theory out of the water that everything is, is centralized and is in the hands of just a few whales. We're going to take a look at some data that's, uh, take, that uh, shows positively uh, that that doesn't happen. And lastly, take a look at PayPal Q4 transaction revenue rose almost 12% in the first quarter report since adding crypto. And you have to remember, uh, PayPal just came on uh, at the end of November, early December of 2020, and they haven't even gotten into Venmo and some other big markets like outside the US. So this is the uh, interesting stuff to take a look at. And uh, we'll do all that today. But first, let's take a look what's going on the market. So today it is, geez, what is it? February 4th, uh, 8.40 a.m. El Paso, Texas time. And here's what we got. Uh, not too much of uh, of big play in the top five or so. Uh, XRP is up six percent. Ta-da! Great, uh, but uh, sure. Thirty-six five for Bitcoin, uh, Binance Coin four percent. But look at Doge, another pump of fifty percent. And I don't know if it's because of what this was actually on my Twitter feed. <laughs> this was uh, Elon Musk, and he put another stupid meme out, and just that little bit of news may have actually pumped up Doge. For no apparent reason, other than the fact that uh, you know Elon Musk said something about it, so uh, good for all you Doge holders. <laughs> I, I still don't understand it, but okay. Uh, let's see what else we got. Thirty-three percent for Ave it looks pretty good. EOS, ah, nobody cares about EOS. And then uh, Uma, one hundred thirty-five percent up. Hmm. Uh, I don't know if there was a new partnership being announced uh, for that DeFi project, but that'll be interesting to see. Compounds also at twenty percent. Sushi up seven percent. So you see a lot of things that are going on with the uh, DeFi space. Which is pretty good, but uh, if you may have noticed, we're using uh, Trade the Chain. I like about this is it, you know, it, it does uh, sentiment analysis. Doesn't just give us like the basic type of stuff. And then there's this cool thing called uh, projection range. And what this does is, I still think that news moves uh, the whole market. And uh, I like using this little tool uh, because I can do stuff like this. They're gonna let me click on that, and it'll tell us. Uh, in a 90% accuracy, what it, what it thinks is going to happen uh, within the next uh, hour. So I don't know what this is. Swiss board, hmm. 4%. Next hour, it's going to move between negative 1% all the way up to 10%. And uh, the way it does this, again, sentiment analysis, it crawls all the uh, websites, all the different blogs, and also has a direct API into Twitter. So it takes a look at what's going on and gives us a sentiment. So that's interesting. Luna, i never heard of that. Uh, Divi. Let me see if I can minimize this. Let me just blow it up. How about that? There we go. Yeah, nice. Let's see. Uma, UMA, uh, 13%. Swipe, never heard of that. Guinea, Augur, Binance Coin. So yeah, this is this is why I like to use this tool because it can just kind of tell us, uh, you know, what the sentiment is right now. And then also what I like to see is, is the uh, one hour change. Because if it's if it's already pumped up a ton, that might not be a good idea to uh, to get into that. But you can see the 24-hour change looking pretty good. So uh, if you want to take more a bigger look at that, there's a link in the description, and uh, that's it. So anyhow, let's take a look what's going on the market, huh? So the first up, we've got the uh, MicroStrategy seminar, which was pretty good yesterday. We did a video about it, and uh, it's very bullish for Bitcoin. Which you know, surprise, surprise. How how amazing is that? But the reason that it is is because you know Michael Saylor is leading the whole thing, and he just only believes in Bitcoin, and that's and all what it all is is corporations and institutions really getting in, and just getting the playbook from MicroStrategy and going, how'd you guys do this? And they pretty much give them everything. They give them uh, PDFs. They have the CFO, the CIO, legal uh, implications, taxes, everything that you possibly need to get into Bitcoin. Believe me, they have it, and uh, they're actually doing breakout sessions right now for uh, the bigger players. So. Uh, it's uh, after this. I think there's going to be a pretty big uh, pump for uh, Bitcoin. Could be wrong. Eh, who knows? But uh, it is interesting. And I and I did say yesterday. I, I thought that it, it will go in waves. Like I said, like some institutions are like on board right now. They just want this this little more piece of information, and then they're off and running. But I think a lot really have to put a plan in place before it happens, and it's going to take some time. And 
from what I had yesterday, let me scroll down here. I had to, uh, I, I took notes on everybody that was talking and I put, I just uh, tweeted everything out so I could actually rem remember it when I did these videos. And like, this is the, the, the three things that I found fascinating yesterday on the second session. And this was from uh, Jeremy Price, Senior VP of Finance. And I had known this, but it really hit home when he, when he said, he goes, hey, look, at MicroStrategy, we transferred all of our cash into Bitcoin, all of our cash. Then we took out debt and put all that debt into Bitcoin as well. So, I mean, like, they're like huge proponents of this. And uh, really just, I was like, wow, it's uh, pretty ballsy. Anyhow, this is the one that made sense to me. Because just like we talked about, some people, some institutions and, and corporations are ready to go. Some need a little bit more time, and some will never uh, have a flight plan. They'll never, they'll never get off first base, and uh, they'll just be stuck, and, and they won't do anything. But the ones in the middle that are really like looking into this, this is also from Jeremy, uh, VP of Finance and MicroStrategy. He says, it took us four months to just put a plan together to go all, to go all in on Bitcoin. This is even, even after Michael Saylor was like, we got to do this, we got to do this, and he probably had some pretty good ideas. So as a corporation, they have to you know, go through legal, they have to go through finance, they have to do, every, do their due diligence, put a plan in place, get places like Coinbase to help them do these microtransactions and then execute. And they were like the first ones to really do it. Now that they've done it, I think you can probably cut that time in half, especially with what's going on. But again, it took them four months to put a plan together and two months to execute. Board approval, IT considerations, onboarding vendors, everything else. So six months right there, you, if you can cut it in half, you're still looking at three months. It's, it, there are no overnight successes. And I think with these corporations, they're going to you know, really take a look at it and go, okay, well, let's do this or let's not do this. And... Um, Ross Stevens from NYDIG, he gave a really great presentation. He said, look, he goes, the biggest question that the CEOs at this conference are going to have to ask themselves is when are they going to transfer their fiat into Bitcoin? Not if, but when. And he goes, right now, you don't think that is the big question, but it will be the next big question in the next decade. And, uh, you know, we'll see if he's right, but uh, it was pretty, uh, pretty interesting. And then uh, lastly, this is when they had... Uh, they had a bunch of different people, but uh, Jeremy Price was leading this, this breakout session. He says, you'll be happy to know there is Bitcoin insurance. That's what custodial insurance is for, but you should also get supplemental insurance just to be safe. So um, they're, they're telling him that they were saying like, like look, you, you, it's not a good idea to put everything on cold storage and get a ledger for like <laughs> billions of Bitcoin. You should really have a custodian and then also just to make sure that you, you know, uh, nothing bad happens. You also get insurance, and they pretty much just laid it out. And then they they gave out PDFs for everybody to download. And I have them. I'll, we'll go over those later. But uh, it was just an uh, interesting piece. And then today we're going to. This was the one that I was interested in. They're going to have, uh, like I said, Binance will be there. Gemini will be there, uh, and uh, I cannot wait for Coinbase to sit up there and say, "Hey, we can help you guys out." So, if you don't think that all these all these entities are really raw rawing for these corporations. Uh, I think you're mistaken. I think all these guys want to get in and they want their business badly. And uh, we'll see how that affects us, the retail player, as they start to onboard all these corporations. Uh, we saw what happened with Coinbase. I don't think Coinbase is really, you know, really here for us uh, so much. So just look at their customer support. Just saying, but uh, not, not that I have anything against them. I don't. I, I mean, I talk bad about them uh, every so often. <laughs> But I don't have anything against them. Like, look, if you're new to this space, just use Coinbase. It's super simple. And uh, you don't have to really deal with too much. Just use PayPal. It's even simpler than that. Yeah, there's markup, but who cares? There's a lot of things to, to consider. Just make it easy on yourself. Just get in right now and then uh, learn a little bit more. Go to uh, danjuicecrypto.com. That's a 100% free website. And you can learn everything you need to know about cryptocurrency. Anyhow, let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on to our, our next piece.